Welcome to the Membership Guys podcast. Kick-ass advice and tips for membership site owners. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Membership Guys podcast. This is episode 228, and I'm your host, Mike Morrison, one half of the Membership Guys. Guys, congratulations, you have found the number one place for proven practical tips and advice on growing a successful membership business. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If this is your first time listening to the Membership Guys podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button on your podcast app, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever it is you use to listen to podcasts. Hit subscribe to make sure that you do not miss a single weekly episode. If you're a long-term listener, you know I love you, you know I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me once again this week and thank you for all of your support of the show. This week we're talking about wait lists, specifically how to keep your membership's wait list engaged. Now, a wait list is basically just a dedicated email list that you get people to subscribe to in order to receive news and updates about a membership that you are going to launch in the future or a membership that's already launched but where you have limited enrollment windows. Again, a wait list is something people will go on while they wait for your membership to be open. We are big, big advocates for setting up a wait list. As soon as you've decided to start a membership site, one of the first things you should do is set up a wait list, a simple landing page that basically just says something exciting is coming. Maybe you have a couple of bullet points about what it's going to be about, and then a little opt-in form that encourages people to pop in their email address in order to receive news and updates and notifications about the membership as it starts coming together and as it uh, gets ready to open up. This gives you somewhere to send people while you do all the work. While you create the content, while you flesh out your idea, while you build the membership, you have somewhere that in the meantime, when you're talking about what you're working on, when you are putting out content, and when you're engaging with other people and you're mentioning your membership, you've got a web address you can send them to, they can get on your list, and you have that captive audience then that you can communicate with. It lets them register their interest so that they're the first to know about any developments, any news. Now, often the wait list is where a substantial amount of your initial members will ultimately come from when you open the door. However, sometimes, you know, when I say the first thing you should do is set up a wait list, that does mean sometimes it can be months and months and months before your membership is ready. So people might be joining your wait list months and months in advance of your membership ready. So how do you keep those people engaged? How do you keep them interested? How do you make sure that they don't forget that they sign up to your wait list and then instantly unsubscribe when you email them to say, okay, this uh, membership that I was talking to you about a year ago is now finally open. All right, so first thing to know is that you don't have to bombard the people on your wait list. Someone doesn't sign up to a wait list expecting to get a daily email. Their expectations aren't going to be high in terms of how frequently they'll be hearing from you. In fact, many people on your wait list may already be on your main email list. So if you are still several months away from launching your membership, then initially the emails that you send to people on your waiting list should be few and far between. It's okay to just shoot out an email once a month with a little update just to give that little reminder, that little uh, nudge to kind of say, you know, we're still coming, we're still working on it, but you're not emailing so frequently that they're sick of you by the time the big day comes and you do open. Now, obviously, the closer you get your launch date, you want to start emailing more. So what sort of stuff should you be sending to your list? Now, again, in those early days where it's few and far between, you can just send out essentially, here's an update, you know, update on this membership and maybe you kind of just bullet point some of the things you've been working on, some of the ideas you've had and so on. As you get a bit closer, you want to mix things up a bit because you want to start stoking the fire. You want to start getting people a little excited, a little more interested, a little more engaged with what's to come. Something that is great to send to people are sneak peeks. 
Sending sneak peeks of your membership to your waitlist is fantastic. So these can be screenshots of courses that they're working on, photographs of you maybe in the process of recording stuff. You might send screenshots of your your actual website. So, you know, if you finish a particular layout for one of your pages or your library starting to come together, take a little screenshot of that. Basically just giving people insights into what you're working on, actually showing them what's coming together. Give them a little glimpse behind the scenes of this great membership that is coming together. Those kind of sneak peeks are fantastic content to send to your waitlist. You can also send emails for the purposes of research. So obviously, if you are creating this membership, the aim of it will be to solve problems, to address pain points, to address needs that your audience have. Your waitlist can essentially be a little focus group. So you can send emails essentially asking them, hey, what is the number one problem you're dealing with right now when it comes to yoga, tennis, learning bass guitar, losing weight, growing your business, whatever the subject of your membership is? These people have engaged with you and they're expressing the desire to have a solution to a problem. So hit them up to find out what those problems are. That actually tells them as well, in addition to giving you valuable research, it tells them that you are researching, right? So you get that double win. You get the win that comes from having that information and being able to use it to flesh out your membership, but you also get the win that comes from almost reiterating to them that you are taking steps to make sure that the membership you're creating is a one that is based on research into the main problems people have. So that's a signal that your membership is going to be awesome. And it's not just about you know researching what your audience want. You can also run surveys or polls with the people on your wait list to get their input on content ideas, maybe on the name of your membership. That's great. If you're struggling to name your membership, throw out some ideas to your wait list, get their input. Maybe, you know, if you've got three or four workshops lined up, but you can't decide which one to release first, ask them, poll the people on your your wait list. Even if you've already made decisions, run them by the people on your wait list. Again, you get that double win. You're making them feel involved, but you're also almost by stealth telling them this is the content that we're putting out there. So, you know, we did that with our wait list. We had, uh, it was specifically the example with workshops. We had a, a few workshops that we were going to do. We had a rough idea of the order in which we were going to do them, but we just set up a, a little poll using SurveyMonkey, which is just a, I mean, the, they've got a free plan that lets you set up surveys where we basically said, here are three workshops we're thinking of doing. Um, we want your input on which one you'd want to see first. And we let people vote. And then actually, we used the results of that survey to determine the order in which we release them. Because that straight away makes those people feel listened to. But also, we know that <laughs> when you had 50% of people saying, we, we want this workshop first, we knew that if we led with that, then obviously they're going to look at that and think, oh, awesome, we can get this, so we're going to join. So yeah, get their input on content, on naming your your site, on whatever you're working on. If you can't make decisions, use your wait list, getting that input, maybe even scheduling short one-on-one calls with a few people on your wait list where you get to pick their brains for 10 or 15 minutes and they get to pick yours for a little bit as well. Again, it allows you to get that more in-depth feedback on something, particularly if you're having difficulty making decisions or you know you just want to get a better understanding of what your audience need, what language they use uh, when they're talking about their problems and so on. Things like this get people invested. It'll make those guys feel part of it. It kind of gives them ownership, right? Because they'll feel like part of this product. They have shaped it. And so, of course, they're going to want to be a part of it when it joins because they've had a hand in helping it become what it is, right? So, again, 
sending surveys, sending polls, getting feedback and getting input from your waitlist on decisions relating to your membership on the type of content you're going to put out, the order of content, um, you know, any any area where you can get that sort of input, input is going to be useful to you, but also is going to make them, one, more aware because it's an excuse, it's a reason to bring your membership back to their attention to become top of mind again. But also just having that input, having that ownership, having that influence and being invested in your membership is going to make them far more likely to want to join and then to be more engaged after they do join. And then when you are ready to launch, consider letting people who are on your wait list join early. So either as a beta test, so again, you can send out that email to them a few weeks before your public launch to let them join up to test things out. Or maybe you do an early access weekend that's only available to the people on your waitlist. So you're going to launch to the public on Monday. Let your waitlist people in on Friday, right? Just to thank them for being patient. Thank them for supporting you. And because you've warmed these people up, they're more likely to jump in there and get things going in your community so that when you do open the doors to the public, there's already a buzz going on inside your membership so again in terms of what is sent to them sneak peeks screenshots and insights into what you're working on if you're sitting down to record a course so if you're doing like a screencast course snap a little shot on your phone of you with the microphone and the screen and the slides up on the screen Uh, if you're if you're filming anything if you're got a whiteboard out and you're planning stuff again take a little a little snapshot of that Send this sort of stuff to your waitlist to show them that you are putting in the work to make this awesome. Use your your waitlist for research. Identify the problems they're dealing with. Poll them on decisions, on ideas you have, and then give them early access to your membership. Great, great ways of keeping your waitlist engaged rather than just letting people languish for months until you have the announcement that you're opening. Now, this is all coming from the perspective of a waitlist for a brand new membership. And we mentioned at the top that, yes, a waitlist is usually uh, most commonly used for a new membership that's launching, but there are some memberships out there that are closed for most of the year, but they only have a limited enrollment window now it's not the model we tend to favor but there's definitely circumstances in which it works and it's always advisable during the periods where you are closed to have some sort of wait list so again you're capturing leads of people who will be interested in your membership when it opens now in terms of content there's probably far less opportunity to do things like surveys and research and there's probably far less need to do it um you know you there's probably ways in which you could throw in a poll maybe you know again if if there are decisions you you want to make that will apply to the membership beyond that next enrollment period then maybe you can find ways of of using surveys and stuff like that but mostly what you're probably going to be doing is those kind of sneak peeks. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to show people, hey, here's what I'm working on. This is what the site is is looking like and how it comes together because it's a finished article. So you won't have as much in progress stuff to show off but you can put together trailers you know what's to come if you have the sort of membership where yes it's a limited enrollment period but you are still adding fresh new content then again those sneak peeks might be a little bit more about showing people the courses you're working on that will be made available in your next enrollment window and stuff like that. Now, one thing you are going to be able to do a lot more with this type of membership waitlist than with the one for a brand new membership is to use social proof. So testimonials, case studies, and stories from the people currently inside your membership site. That is gold. Social proof is so, so, so useful. So make sure you're making good use of that. Again, you might there might be ways in which you can utilize social proof for a, a new membership, but obviously it's not that social proof is not going to come from the experiences of members. It's going to come from maybe clients or you know people who aren't necessarily like the ones who are on your waitlist. Whereas if this is a waitlist for a closed door membership, you can actually show people these are the results that members who joined in the last window are currently getting. And therefore, these are the sorts of results you can look forward to 
if you join in the next enrollment window. Now, I would definitely say that in terms of timing, you want to focus the bulk of your engagement efforts on the month before you reopen. Otherwise, you're going to annoy the hell out of people who see all this stuff and they're like, yeah, this is so cool because they won't be able to join. They're going to get frustrated by your decision to have the doors closed. You're reminding them of the fact that they have a problem while continuing to withhold the solution. So with the closed door model in particular, uh, you want to just be a little more cautious about the timing. You don't want to be rubbing people's noses in the fact that they are not a member and that they've got months to wait until they get the opportunity to become one. Again, with the closed door model in particular, it's also worth sending free content and resources. So um, again, you might you might do this in the build up to that that month before you open. So just in the same way you'd send stuff out to your regular email list, latest podcasts, latest blogs, you'd send that to your waitlist people too. Think about whether there's any sort of pre work that will help prepare people for your membership. So, for example, with us, if we had the closed door model, if hell froze over and we went down that route, um, we would send content that was aimed around helping people figure out whether or not a membership is right for them. Because that would mean that when we open the doors, they probably have already made that decision about whether our membership is right. They've done that pre-work. And therefore, if they join, there's more chance that they'll then stick around because we've essentially pre-qualified them. So think about whether there's anything like that for you. So for example, let's say you've got a closed door membership that teaches people how to play electric guitar. Then while they're on the wait list, you could send them stuff around helping them to choose the right guitar, helping them to establish those early practice habits so that actually when the doors do open, They've got the guitar, so they're more likely to be the right fit to join your membership. And actually, they're, they're already just one step into the process so that when they do join, they're enthusiastic, they're engaged, and they're more likely to stick around long term. So whether it's for a brand new membership or for an existing one where you only have the doors open for enrollment a few times a year, it is definitely worth setting up a wait list. And hopefully this episode has given you some ideas for how to keep that list engaged and excited so you stand a far better chance that those guys will join your membership when the wait is finally over. That's it from me for this week. Hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully if you are planning your membership out and you already have a wait list or heaven forbid you've not set up a wait list and this has urged you to go out there and set one up, then hopefully now you're going to do a lot more, a lot better in terms of keeping that wait list engaged so they're totally primed to join your membership when the doors open. I'm out of here. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back again next week with another installment of the Membership Guys podcast. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this week's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com. The Membership Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing and running a membership website. Whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be or whether your website is already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, monthly training, exclusive member-only discounts, perks and tools, and a supportive, active community to help you along the way with feedback, encouragement and advice, the Membership Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage and grow a successful membership website. Check it out at membershipacademy.com.